So today, let's learn some techniques to find all of the missing values in our data frames. So of course, the first step is always importing pandas because we're going to use some pandas functions in this uh, little tutorial. Uh, I am again pulling up my trusty old data set from New York taxi trips. Uh, I'm going to use the January uh, rights of taxi drivers in New York and the 1st of January 2019. And the reason that I chose this gigantic data set with more than 7 million entries is that sometimes you would see people showing you how to find missing values in data sets like toy data sets like 100 entries and 50 entries but that doesn't really reflect reality because the actual problem with finding missing values is that you cannot just look at your data frame and see it even though there might be tens of thousands of missing values. So that's why you're going to need some systematic ways of looking into your data frame and understanding if there are any missing values. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. The first technique that I want to show you is the built-in techniques of pandas. So it's basically what you can do is isna or is null. They do the, they do exact same thing. So you choose whichever one that you like and using the sum function. So um, I'll just show you what isna does when there is only very few examples. So head will give me only five entries from the beginning. And it basically gives you a little table and instead of the values, it tells you if it's none or not, if it's null or not. And when you use sum, then it will uh, give you the sum of all the values that are none. So I will not use head now. And I wanted to look at all the, uh, the whole data set as a whole. Let's see. So look, now it doesn't look like anything is missing here, but actually it says that my PU location ID has 121,000, more than 121,000 missing values. So that is something that you would not be able to see if you're just looking at the data frame. Uh, if I run the is null, it's going to tell me the exact same thing. So again, before you start doing any missing value analysis, I think it makes sense to just run these two to kind of start with the baseline. All right, so now it looks like from our previous uh, attempt that there are no other missing values, but actually there are missing values in this data. I know because I prepared it. So let's see how to find it. Um, let's see, uh, the next thing that I can do is to uh, look at the different types of values that a column has. So I wanna do it with the payment type column. Uh, it looks like this is kind of like payment type decoded in different ways, like encoded in different ways, like maybe one means cash, two means credit card. I don't really know what all the values are, but let's check here to see. Okay, we have one, two, another one, maybe there is a... Uh a gap or something here uh, and then three four and then we have na so there are eight values that are na so, and you know for some reason one reason or another this wasn't actually captured as missing uh, when you are importing your data set because it's not nan if you put it as nan uh, when you're importing it pandas will be able to uh, realize that it is a missing value and then report it to you but you know sometimes people don't really when they're programming a uh, software they do not correctly put it in maybe there is a mistake there is something so it's always good to check so that's why this is the second thing that I do I look at uh, unless there are many different values uh, if there are some categorical columns with not that many values I just do a value count and then it shows me how many times a value is uh, mentioned. Uh, you cannot really do this, for example, for total amount because total amount has an enormous number of different values, right? Because this is a float. This is the amount of money that people paid for a taxi ride. This could be anything. So you, it will not really be able to, you will not really be able to see any missing values or anything there. So we can even check this total amount value counts would yeah give me something like this you know so it starts from some random number goes to some other random number and yeah even if there are some na or something there it would not really be possible to see so let's just revert what we did here and yeah this is the second way of how you can approach this and the next thing that we can do is checking the types of columns so the logic behind this approach is that when you are importing your data frame 
with pandas, pandas knows exactly what kind of um, type your data frame or your columns have. If it's a float, it imports it as float. If it's integer, it imports it as integer. If it's a string, it imports it as something called object. So by looking at what kind of types your data frame columns have, you might see that, oh, maybe there is a problem because this wasn't imported as the type that it is supposed to be. So let's see, the pickup date time, it's normal for the um, date times to be imported as object, then you would have to cast them into date time. Uh, passenger count is integer, that's correct. Trip distance is float. Um, location ID is float, well, it's integer, but like that's fine. Um, and payment type is object. Oh, it's probably location ID is float because there are some missing values there like we figured out. Payment type is object and total amount is object. So as you see, we realize that in payment type, there is this thing called NA, so, or NA, uh, <laughs> kind of a default into Turkish or Dutch sometimes, uh, NA. So in that case, we actually, just by doing this, we could have figured out, hey, there's a problem with payment type too, because it wasn't imported as integer, which is supposed to be. Uh, but we already figured that out. Right now, the things that get my attention are the date time, the pickup date time, and the total amount. So I want to, what I do here is, if you try to convert your, or cast your column into the column that it's supposed to be, and there is an error, that means that there is something fishy going on in there. So if I try to cast the pickup date time column into date time, let's see what happens. Well, it succeeds. Okay, so there, there are no problems there anymore. So if I run this again, the types, uh, it shows me that daytime is daytime. So uh, there, but this doesn't mean that there are any, there are not any missing values. This just means that there aren't any missing values that look like they are not a daytime. So let's just keep that in mind for a second. Uh, the next one is total amount because we already find the payment type. We know there are missing values there. I'm going to look into payment type. So if I try to cast it into float, I get a value error. What does it say? Could not convert string to float T. So this normally gives you the, the culprit, basically, which one is not able to be cast into a float or integer string, whatever you're trying to cast it into. Um, and now I know it's this value called T. So I want to look into um, what T is. Yeah, apparently there are two times where the total amount is written as T. So this could be because of many reasons, uh, you know, in, in a job, if you're working and you find something like this, what you should do is probably go ask the person who knows the most about the data or ask the person who wrote the code that collects the data, or if you can find the people who actually entered the data. Um, but yeah, of course, this would be kind of like a detective work to find out why this happened and stop it from occurring again. Um, but yeah, so we see there are two uh, columns or two rows where the total amount is e equals to t. So as I mentioned before, we could not have seen it with value counts because there are two of them, right? So this is how they show us the value count. So it starts from some values that have occurred 167,000 times and then there are a lot of values that only have occurred one time. So maybe if this only occurred one time, maybe we would have seen it at the bottom because uh, sorting wise because it's an integer because it's a string it would have gone to the bottom but we see that because it happens two times it's going to be somewhere in here so we will not be able to see it just by looking at value count so that's why we needed to do this extra step of trying to cast it and see if something works or doesn't work so the last thing that i do to figure out if there are any missing values is to sort the values in a column this is a nice way because if there are values that are so different than the normal values that your column has it will be very obvious it'll be very easy to see them sometimes they look like outliers then there might need to be some other action done there uh, but yeah as i said sometimes they're just so different that they are missing values no question uh, if you remember from my previous step, uh, I said that, okay, the pickup daytime, we are able to cast it into daytime, but I still want to look into it to see if everything is right. So I'm going to sort its values and see the results. 
So sorting defaults to uh, starting from the lowest value to the highest value, you cannot do this, by the way, before you cast it into date type, uh, because date time, because it's just going to look at it like they are strings. So the sorting is not going to be uh, chronological. Uh, that's why now I'm able to do this because I've already cast it into date type. Looking at this, it's very easy to see that there are problems. <laughs> First of all, we have information that is from 1987 that is very obvious that it does not belong into this data set. And looking further, I see that there is information from 2088, which I don't really think that anyone has taken a cab in New York in 2088 yet. Um, so obviously something went wrong with the programming and some of the values defaulted to the earliest time possible and some of them defaulted to the latest time possible. This could be for many reasons. Could be that in the program they said if this kind of error happens just write the earliest default value. If this kind of problem happens or maybe the driver accidentally typed in instead of 2001, 3001 and then it defaulted to the uh, possible highest possible value which is 2088 could be many things but now we're able to see it so that is already a great first step so the next thing that you want to do of course is to fix these missing information and how you're going to fix them and the approach that you're going to take could be one of many things and that go that is going to depend on how many missing values that you have in this column, how important this column is for your training, the training of your model and how difficult it is to solve the specific uh, missing information. And uh, if you want to learn how to do this based on all different types of missing values that we've seen in this tutorial, you can go take my hands-on data science, complete your first portfolio project course. In that course, I go through the whole data cleaning, data preparation, data processing steps, also the model training, model testing and tuning steps uh, of a data science project. So we basically follow a whole data science project from beginning to end. And actually I am using a very similar data set there too. So I would love to see you there. I would love to welcome you in that course if you're interested in this. All functions I use in this video is covered in the free pandas cheat sheet that I have. If you'd like to have everything that we talk about in this video in writing and as a reference in the future, go download my free pandas cheat sheet using the link in the description. Before you go, don't forget to give me a like and maybe even subscribe to show your support. I would also love to hear from you with your comments or questions in the comment section. But hey, thanks for watching again and I will see you in the next video.